Hi, welcome to writing AppleSoft Basic 1 and 2 liners. I'm Dagan Brock. Um, in programming, a one-liner is, is like its name implies, a program that's written in one, uh, one line of code. Um, and they can be written in many different languages. Um, AppleSoft Basic may not be the first uh, choice for some people for a programming language, but uh, I think it makes perfect sense for a one-liner because it um, really fits the model that uh, back in the day magazines would come with uh, programs that you would type in on your own and often they would have a little one-liner or two-liner and um, you know unlike the longer programs that often you know took you a long time to enter and debug these were pretty simple and yet they always seem to do pretty wondrous things for their compact amount of code so um, and it's it's really easy I think this will be approachable even for people that don't program or certainly don't know AppleSoft basic that well I'll kind of take you through the steps real fast and we'll kind of go through um, I guess the creation and, and deconstruction of what a one-liner or two-liner is and, and practice writing one or two so let's go ahead and get into it and uh, I'm gonna use a Apple II GS emulator, uh, just because I I have a nice workflow already. Actually, let me reboot that. We'll just go right into Basic, and I have uh, the ability to copy and paste directly into my emulator, which is nice. So, of course, you can write on real hardware. That's a little bit hard to video. Um, so, first, let's take a look at what some one-liners and two-liners look like. Some of these I've thrown on my Twitter. So here's a this first one that you can see. Uh, just one line of code starts at line zero and that's all there is and it draws sort of a little sun with some I guess sunbursts in a different color and says morning sunshine. So you know nothing groundbreaking, kind of cute. Um, let's try this two-liner. I'll just do the same thing. I'm just pasting it in and then running it. So a little, little more complex in a way. It draws a little scene. It says, "Don't worry, be happy." Um, so that's really it. Um, so let's take a look at one more one-liner, and we'll we'll sort of actually deconstruct this one. Actually, let's. Uh, sorry, let's. Excuse my loud keyboard. So it's just going to run this, and I think I wrote this, um, you know, one Friday morning uh, when I was trying to avoid work. You know, and it's just a little coffee cup, right? And uh, and uh, it says Happy Friday, all right? So let's take a look at what this is actually doing first. Um, I guess we should probably talk about these colons. The colons themselves are really the breaks in between statements. So I could go through here and take all these out. Um, I can also just do a find and replace in here with a regex. I'm using Atom. I like Vim a lot, but um, I think for the video this might be a little better today. So, all right, I guess when you get down to it, the one-liner is actually multiple basic statements put together. Um, and again, you just the limit of the line is really up to how many characters you can put in there. Um, so here's our statements. It just turns on the graphics screen. I, you know, I can actually type these in. Uh, sets a color, and in this low-res graphics mode, we have uh, color 0 through 15. There's there's 15 colors, and color 15 is white. And then it has this command called hline or hlin. It's a horizontal line. <coughs> Excuse me. And the syntax is a little unusual in that it gives uh, the x and y, or sorry, the x start and end points, and then you tell it which vertical line to put it on. All right. So. That was the top of our coffee cup. Then after that, I've got a loop right here that loops from 10 to 35 and draws a line at um, starting at 10 and going to 30. So let's just paste that in real fast. Oh, I can't do that. Let me. Okay, so that draws the big body of it, and then, you know, there's some more line drawing commands here, a horizontal line and a vertical line to draw the little handle and everything. So yeah, you know, you put it all together and you get that uh, that coffee cup at the very end. It, it 
clears this text portion at the bottom and sets the uh, screen position and then prints out Happy Friday. Um, so let's kind of go the reverse direction and, and we'll start with writing one really simple and I think this is something that uh, anybody could do and you know you could you could even just sitting at home with your kids start out with a piece of graph paper and um, you know draw out your your character and then start plotting it out and of course you could get really big ones that take more than one line and, and do a bunch of programming we're just going to do some simple stuff here so let's uh, start over and we'll do a similar one where we set the uh, graphics to low res graphics mode and avoid using white space. Uh, I'm not going to compress it too much. You can really abuse the basic tokenizer and push everything, smush it together with no white space, but I'm going to try and leave some readability so that... Um, actually, let's just do it in here. Well, no, no, we'll do it in here. That way we can make some modifications. So let's draw a vertical line, and this time we're going to draw it uh, starting up at like pixel 5 going down to 25 at the X position of, I don't know, nice and even 10. So let's run this real fast. And we get a vertical line. Um, let's just copy and paste here. Uh, move it over and do like a horizontal line between those two vertical lines, somewhere in the middle. Um, uh, wait, yeah. Because that'll be, sh wait, 10, that'll be shorter at uh, 25. Cool. Now it says hi. Like so really simple. You can figure out how to basically plot out stuff in AppleSoft Basic. I'm not gonna give you a lesson on low res graphics, but uh, you know, this could be the start of your program. Let's say you wanna add on to it. Um, change the color, put a little red dot over there, right? Great. Um, so again this is multiple lines. Uh, if you were editing this on hardware, I would say you're, the only difference here is I would be putting line numbers in and editing it like a normal basic program until the very end, and then I would try and see if I could do it as a one-liner, because then you get the ability to, uh, you know, do your basic line renumbering. But since I can just paste it in every time, I don't really need to use line numbers here. Um, I could probably do another find and replace. Oops, already got a typo. Sorry, we're just trying, I'm trying to do a very quick, low-budget video today, one take, we'll just have a little casual fun. All right, so that's kind of, we wrote a one-liner, I know it's not super impressive, but that's sort of the process you might go through. Um, and they're sort of, I guess, in, in the ones we looked at here, this one is really just driven by data um, that I've hand generated, and in, if you think about demo effects, when you're writing a demo effect, they're sort of two different types in old school demos like data driven table effects um, and then you know hardware effects um, but on those data driven effects we also have sort of the algorithmic side so um, of course newer demos can do things in real time we're going to do some things in real time like this sun one here actually is you know calculated real time with some sine and cosine so we're going to do that um, let's write one that's a little more complex this time that um, well, let's let's do another uh, sort of equation because with algorithms, I'm not really great at math, but we can always borrow from somewhere on the internet and um, f fit a lot more um, you know data into our program by using a, some sort of simple algorithm. So, excuse me, need a drink of water. Let's do. Um, Uh, 
let's see if we can graph a heart. And again, I'm not a, uh, a math wizard. I'm really just looking for something that can give me some, really some X and Y coordinates. This is cool. It looks like it has a couple of different formulas based on shapes, but I'd rather not kind of unwind this. I'd like to have it already <laughs> spoon fed to me so I can just kind of throw it in a program. Okay, this looks pretty simple. So basically it looks like here's a heart curve where if any point we want to get an X and a Y, we just have to pass in this T value to, to both of them. So let's Let's see if we can make a little one-liner or two-liner with that. Um, so, oh, cool. Actually, let me paste that in there, sort of okay. Um, we're missing multiplier, something like that. Cos, was it cosine t? Yeah. All right, so let's this time we're going to use the high resolution mode. So it's HGR, and in this mode, um, the commands are a little different. You have H color, uh, H color three, I think, is a pure white. Well, uh, white is an odd thing in here. So let's uh, let's see. In this mode, the other difference is so let's say your command is H plot, and you still start at zero zero. The screen has something like a 280 by 192 resolution. With the bottom four lines, it's more like uh, maybe 150 is about the bottom, or sorry. So it'd be like 279 because we start at zero to 150. I don't so I don't know the exact values, but it's something like 00 to 279, 150 for our coordinates. So let's start our program. Um, we can do an HGR for the high resolution. Uh, we'll set the color, and then we need to feed some values in for this equation that we want to do. And we'll, we'll say our t is 0 to 100. And um, you know, this is a, the for loops in basic are really a good way to pack a lot into a one liner. So you can't really, if you have a two liner, you can use go to and go sub. Um, I guess you could potentially use them in a one liner, but it doesn't give you um, the, really an opportunity for sort of multiple looping strategies. And of course, you can do nested loops and things like that. So the for loop is one of the heroes of the one and two liner, if you ask me. So we can feed in this as a sort of range and get out a bunch of values. So we want to solve for x, right? Um, and it says it's 16 times uh, sine to the power of 3 times t. All right, that's what our equation says here. Um, so in basic, you know, you can do something like that. Let's change it to text. So the print is, uh, the question mark is a shortcut for print. So we can print 3 times 3 times 3, right? 3 to the power of 3 is 27, but it does have, you know, a nice exponent built in. Um, so in this case, we want to say, like, let's, and there's also a sign built in, which is nice. It's not super speedy. Right, so let's say I want to do sine to the power of three. Let's make sure that, or yeah, the sine of one to the power of three. Um, and I can check that real fast too. Uh, with my supposedly modern computer. So you know, not too bad. You know, it's it's definitely a, a little rough on the the number engine, but it's better than I could write, so I'm not complaining. Um, the interpreter's got a pretty full-fledged uh, math engine built in, so really all we need to do is, is write that in basic syntax. Um, uh, let's see, that's 
that would be Let's see what we get for those values. Actually, I don't want to do that. I just want to check real fast kind of what the output of this looks like. Oh, yeah, I can't do a, uh, a for loop here without line numbers. Let's go ahead and just do line numbers. We'll pretend we're writing it like a basic program just normally first. I'm not I'm not doing anything with that. Apologies. Just want to do a little test. Um, I guess I could just put that in here. That's the nice thing about having an actual interpreter where you can sort of do things real time and we can even just skip to the part of the program we're interested in. Okay, so it looks like it is actually giving me back some values that move around positive and negative because it's probably starting, you know, the coordinate system in the middle of uh, zero of the four quadrants. So let's just move along and get our y value the same way. I'm actually just going to copy and paste this and edit it. So for y for that t value Sine two times t. Times t. And we'll need to to plot this. Yeah, let's go ahead and plot it. Move this down um, using the h plot command. And if we did x y, it would it would uh, break our program pretty quickly because there were negative values, right? And we can really only go from um, those plot coordinates that I said earlier, starting at zero and moving in the positive direction. So uh, basically, let's do the offset, which is something like um, half of 280, which is 140, well, 139, and 150. We'll just say 75. It's not exact at this point. OK, let's try this program. And uh, oops. Okay, so it's plotting. The reason that some of the pixels are purple and green, if you're not an Apple person, has to do with the the dot shift, and uh, you'll only get a pure white when two pixels are ne next to one another. Um, I won't get into details on that, but um, our heart is upside down. Our heart is upside down. We need to um, you know we need to s subtract this y value from like that's the middle right so we would just kind of say is this right this feels really janky. Let's try. Okay. All right. That's, that is close. So that's in the middle. Um, let's spice it up a little bit because this is definitely not going to take all of one line. Um, it's kind of small. So let's do some scaling. Let's scale it up, but maybe we can, let's again, how about the for loop, our hero again, to make code do extra things. We'll say s for like a scale factor, and we'll start from 1 to 3. So we've got a scale factor from 1 to 3, and now we'll just basically uh, multiply, multiply, uh, and, of course, 
we need our next. And what else? Um, let's also do this. Let's spice it up more. We're really packing it in. Let's change the color and say... So the apple coloring is weird. Um, there's some, some blacks in the in the eight colors that you get on the high res mode on the old Apple IIe's. So, but going from four to five to six, it's, um, wait, four, five, six is, well, let's see. Oops. And it's not showing up, so. So, okay, it's five, six, seven is what I want. Color five. All right, so five is color orange. Six is blue and seven is white. So if we start with four plus our scale factor, and that'll give me five, six, and seven. Let's check that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, kind of. <laughs> kind of there. Uh, we can fill this in a little bit more. We can let's give it more values. I'm guessing this probably needs to get maybe to 359. Will give us the full range of values. Um, let's see what else. Uh, you know, if we it will slow it down. But we're not really going to uh, worry about speed on a, a one-liner. Uh, but what we can do here is also plot this over one. Um, and I'll do some, some early compaction here. So now we're repeating this r twice. So we're going to plot the pixels next to each other, two pixels next to each other each time the x value changes, the y value doesn't, so I'm going to go ahead and take off this y value and we will just call it b. We'll set b right here. So b is now going to be that y value since we're repeating it. We save quite a bit of characters by not saying that twice. Um, you know, a couple characters. Savings is savings. Um, and let me fix this and we'll try that again. It looks like it's filling in really well though. Okay, and can we speed that up a little bit? Um, I think that other than that, you know, um, maybe do an, a little that looks really good actually uh, let me see if this is a nice little spot for a message sure let's make it a little one-liner now take my line numbers out Okay, we don't need this anymore because we set the color for each pixel. I mean, this isn't going to be the fastest because we're doing a lot of these things over and over in a loop, but um, it's it's very compact. Uh, another thing is because these loops are nested, you don't really need to specify which one is going next. It's going to do the inner then the outer. Um, let me see if I can do this with my editor find and we will take all of the new lines and give them the magic one liner treatment minus that extra one let's give it a positive affirmative message 
because it's a very nice heart. I want to say nice things. You know what? Maybe let's uh, let's move the home up to the beginning. So we don't see that while it's drawing. Actually, we could do the whole thing. Eh, right. Now I'm getting into aesthetic choices here, I guess. But that is the thing. I mean, I feel like there's a little bit of your own expressive artiness in it. Um, maybe that's silly. That can go up, and this can probably go over to... Uh, I don't know. Okay, um, but yeah, I think you get the point of it. It's really just uh, a, a simple little exercise and kind of playing around with the interpreter, playing around with the language. Uh, you can do graphics programs, you can do sound programs, you can do text programs, you can do animations. I will say that sound programs are a little bit hard to do in basic on AppleSoft because um, of the speed of the interpreter, so unless you're willing to sort of push some machine language bytes into a little program in memory and, and call that out to that. It's hard to do much with sound, though I have done um, some, some basic sound routines without using uh, machine language, but your mileage may vary there. Um, other than that, uh, I want to bring up, there was a, someone else uh, that's recently, I, I, I generally just post these on my Twitter when I uh, take a little time and, and write one. So you can follow me at 65816guy. I'll put that in the description. Uh, this other user, I posted one of his that um, I didn't realize he had a repository for, but he's doing a really good job of actually collecting his own one and two liners on GitLab, uh, GitHub. So I'll put a link to this as well. Um, it's really nicely done. That was one that I had posted on my Twitter and also posted a modification of. So uh, I believe his name is Lee Fastenow. So that's the end of AppleSoft 1 and 2 liners. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this is dedicated to my friend Shannon Lazenby, uh, definitely someone who spread love here in Kansas City and around the world. And he passed away this week, and he'll be very missed by very many people. So thank you, Shannon, for your time. Thank you, viewers, for your time as well. I hope you get to try some of this. Um, you can do it. You can do anything. Uh, it just takes a little bit of patience and a little practice and really it, a lot of fun. There's, there's a lot of experimentation in play. So thanks for watching and have a good one. Take care.